So the other day, I asked the community, who is your favorite producer of all time? And I got some great answers. And some fantastic answers. More importantly, it made me think, what are some things that these great producers did in their beats that helped them stand out and made them so great? And honestly, what I found might change how you make beats forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Like, like I, I get the inspiration from talking to people like P. Rock, and Diamond D. Man, every time I call P, you he's in the base. Yeah, it's like every time I call him, he's working. Yeah. Every time I call Diamond D, he's in the lab. So it's like I, it's nothing for me to do but do the same thing. So who you just heard was Jay Dilla, and if you don't know who Jay Dilla is, do you not know anything about music? Is what some people would say. If you don't know who Jay Dilla is, he's probably one of your favorite producers, favorite producer, or your favorite producers, favorite producers, favorite producer, if that makes any sense. He worked with artists like Tribe Called Quest, Erica Badu, and he created a bunch of his own really dope albums as well. So one thing I wanna share that I learned from Jay Dilla, and I think it's especially important in today's day and age where we're all pretty much making our beats using a computer, is how he went about humanizing his drums. So typically, when when you're making a beat, your drums are probably going to be perfectly on time and quantized like this right here. Now what Jay Dilla did was he turned off the quantizer, played the drums out, and so he wasn't worried about being perfectly on time, and so his drums would sound a bit more like this. Now, if you pair it with a loop, it's going to sound a bit more authentic and more like it belongs than if you just use perfectly quantized drums. When I make my music, you know what I'm saying, I, I, want, I want people to feel what I feel, I, I want them to feel that energy that I, whatever it was, yeah, that, that's all it is, because I, I make it straight from the heart, so it's like, to be taken for anything else is crazy to me. You ain't got no bounce, Nick. You ain't got no bounce, Nick. You ain't got no bounce, Nick. The bounce coming up. Timberland is widely considered, you know, one of the greatest producers of his generation. He produced for artists like Justin Timberlake, Missy Elliott, and Jay-Z. And honestly, he used tons of different techniques to set himself apart from other producers. I think simplicity is the, is the key. You don't need a lot. You don't want to cl clutter the, the song. Yeah. You want to add ear candy to the song, yeah, yeah. but you don't want to overpower the song. As you can hear in that clip, he mentioned that he likes to keep things simple and add ear candy. Now, if you don't know what ear candy is, it's basically sounds that you can use to enhance your beat and kind of fill up empty space. But the way Timbaland uses ear candy is very unique in comparison to other producers. So let's take this drum loop right here. And so that loop sounds cool, but there's plenty of space that could be filled up to kind of enhance things. And one of the ways Timbaland would do this is he would use a lot of perks, but they would have delay on them. There's two ways you can do it. Just get a, you know, perk with a delay sound on it. And then two, just get a sound and kind of just play the velocity so it trails off like right here. And then make sure to add interesting sounds. And if you like those sounds, good news for you. You can get them all for free on my website. Mike Dean is known for his contributions on major albums. He's done with Kanye West, as well as like Astro World. What I think really sets him apart is his use of synths. He's known as the synth god. And one thing for synths that really stands out to me for his sound is specifically his synth basses. And there's a couple ways he does this. First, his verse is just putting the synth bass on one note, like maybe just following the root notes, like right here.
one trick he uses on his bass lines is he'll just move a note towards the end of a bar, just up an octave. And he uses a bass line where you kind of get like a sliding effect. And then another trick he uses, which he uses in this clip right here. He just plays with the cutoff in the bass. Removes or adds high frequencies. It's basically all you need to know. And you can do that using something like this in your VST. Or if you just get a really distorted bass, add an EQ and basically move the EQ like this. And here's how it sounds. So this next trick is very simple. I'm gonna show you guys how you're gonna wanna do it because you might hear it and be like, okay, like that's cool. But when I first heard this and started doing it, I have not stopped since. I do this in pretty much every single one of my beats at this point, literally because of this video right here. I just couldn't resist. Now my beats, you know, I usually love having points where like a bass line, a breakdown, I have that here in this beat. You know, I like to switch back and forth between with them, play with it, you know. And I can play, you know, the whole video, obviously. Probably shouldn't even play that one, but you know, I do what I want, so. When I want, how I want. So in order to do this trick, you need an 808 and a baseline. Pretty much all you're gonna do is switch between the two. But, cause I know you're thinking, okay, I got it. I'm gonna just move on now. There's a few ways that you wanna do this. Otherwise it's not gonna make your beat sound any better. First way you can use this is for the intro of the song, have a baseline going, no other drums, etc., and then have a drop in. So that was just my song City. But because of that switch, the 808 hits so much harder and there's still like a fullness added to your beat at the intro. And then the other way you can use this is for breakdowns. If you have an 808 all throughout the song and you switch to a bass line and just have your snare and a couple percussion instruments playing, it's gonna give a really cool effect. So here's an example. last but not least, gotta talk about the Neptunes. These dudes were two of the biggest producers of the 2000s and arguably the greatest producer duo of all time. So check out this video as I do a deep dive on what they thought was the most important aspects of their music. <laughs> 